We're going to look at graphing the surface, x equals y squared plus 4z squared minus 4 in R3. So I have some axes set up over here already. I'm going to go ahead and label them. Uh, the one coming to the right would be our positive y-axis. The one coming out of the paper toward us would be the positive x-axis. And then that would mean that z-axis, positive z-axis, is going straight up. So standard orientation. Um, all right, so we're going to start graphing this by doing the traces in each of the coordinate planes. And since the y and z axes are in the surface of the paper, that's probably the easiest one to do first. So in the yz plane, we would have x being equal to 0. So if I plug in x equals 0 into my equation, I get um, 0 equals y squared plus 4z squared minus 4. And so hopefully it doesn't take you too long to recognize that as an equation of an ellipse in the yz plane. You might want to do a little bit of rearranging to put it in standard form. So I'd add the 4 constant term to the other side of the to both sides of the equation so that it's over on the left side. And then divide through by that 4. So I'd have 1 equals y squared over over 4 plus z squared, and I'm going to go ahead and put that as z squared over 1, so it's easy to look at that and think about what the intercepts are. So that is standard form for an ellipse with y-intercepts of plus and minus 2, and z-intercept of plus and minus 1. And it's very easy to see once it's in standard form like that. So I'm going to plot those points and attempt to sketch my ellipse. Okay, so that's probably the best I can do as I'm still learning to use my little stylus here. Um, so a couple of important things to note about this ellipse. Uh, that ellipse is in the yz plane, so that means that it is not intersecting the x-axis. Um, so over here, where it looks like it's crossing through the x-axis, it's important to remember that the x-axis is coming out of the paper, so it's passing in front of that bottom part of the ellipse over there. And then back here on the negative part of the x-axis, the ellipse is in the surface of the paper, and the negative part of the x-axis would be going back into the paper, so that negative part of the x-axis is passing behind that ellipse. Okay, we'll do some of the other traces here. It uh, doesn't matter which one we do next, so let's just plug in y equals 0 and see what we get when we do that. All right, so we'll have x equals 4z squared minus 4. And so again, hopefully it doesn't take you too long to figure out what kind of shape that is. Uh, we've got one variable squared, not the other. So that's typical form for parabola. And that's going to open on the axis of the variable that's not squared. So that'll open on the x-axis. Um, when z gets large, my x values will get large and positive. So it's going to open toward the positive end of the x-axis. And uh, the basic parabola x equals z squared would have vertex at the origin. Um, the subtracting 4 here will shift the parabola back so that it has a vertex at negative 4. And the 4 coefficient here makes it narrower than the kind of basic parabola. So back here on the x-axis, I'm going to make some marks here and we'll scale off and call this negative 4 back here. And then we can think about where it would cross the z-axis. So we can think about when x is 0 on that equation, uh, z would be positive and negative 1. So we got a couple points there. And we can sketch in the ellipse. And again, remembering that that's in the xz plane, so these places where maybe it looks like it's intersecting uh, some of the other curves really just passing in front of or behind the curve we have in red there. Okay, I'm going to change colors one more time and do our last cross section. When z equals 0, we get x equals y squared minus 4. And that's pretty easy to recognize as the equation of an a I'm sorry, I said ellipse. As the equation of a parabola, one variable squared, not the other. So that's typical for equation of a parabola. That's going to open on the x-axis. And when y gets large, x will get very large, positive. So it opens on the positive x-axis. 
the vertex is shifted back to x equals negative 4. So we intersect the x-axis at negative 4. It will cross the y-axis at plus or minus 2. Note that those are lining up with the other trace that we have there where it intersects the y-axis. That should happen. If that's not happening, you likely have a mistake somewhere. Not likely, you do have a mistake somewhere. All right, so we, what we've got now is kind of a wireframe uh, sketch of our surface here. And we're going to go ahead and add in some contour lines and things to make it a little bit look a little bit fuller, maybe, if I can get my pen to change colors here. Um, all right, so what we have is this bowl-shaped graph or this paraboloid that's opening on the positive x-axis. And we can just kind of add in some boundaries. Okay, I'm just kind of using the shapes that are already there and just a little kind of contour lines or shading. I'm making little uh, shading that are arcs parallel to that arc of the ellipse, that top portion of the ellipse there. Kind of make that look wireframe a little bit so that it, you can see that that's the top part. And then the inside of the bowl shape here would be going back along the x-axis. I could do some shading there if I want. If I wanted to use a different color or something, maybe that would be a nice thing to do. So you don't have to use another color, but if you can if you want to. Maybe make some contour lines that sort of follow the bottom arc of that ellipse. All right, so there's our paraboloid opening on the positive x-axis, vertex at negative 4.